Hello, Make Idaho Better followers. Um, I've got TJ Thompson here, Boise City Councilman uh, member, and we are going to talk about some survey results. Um, as if you've ever seen a video from us before, you know we're going to, I'm going to set the stage a little bit. So maybe you don't know what Make Idaho Better is. What it is, is emails, short surveys, public results and analysis, and leader interviews. This is a leader interview with the whole idea being the easiest way for you to contribute to state and local solutions. So if you want your voice to be heard and you wanna make a difference and you want our elected leaders to understand your perspective and hopefully be able to do something about it, uh, this is the easiest way you can do that. There's a, lots of other ways um, you can get face to face, but those usually require a lot more time and effort and this you can do with only a couple minutes a week. So if that sounds good to you, um, click the do your part link That'll take you to our email signup list, and then you'll be getting the emails and you'll be getting the results delivered directly to your inbox as well. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're talking about our animal abuse survey. And for all of our surveys, we try to be totally transparent as much as possible about how this whole thing worked. So this survey page has the entire survey. This is just a screenshot, but you can click here to see the whole PDF, exactly how all the questions were asked. Um, you can see the results. Um, this is a survey monkey link where you can actually see the overall results. Um, and this is what TJ and I are going to spend our time on in this video. And then there's analysis and I forgot my screenshot there, but I'll get that added hopefully after this. The analysis, oh, I had scrolled down. The analysis is where I go below the surface of those overall results. And I try to show with my you know, data analytics background and my, and my point of view, what I'm seeing and what I think it means. So I do a video on this too, if you want me to give you the walkthrough, that's what that's about. Got my main takeaways and talk about like who we heard from in, in the survey. And then things like, you know, let's get a good example, here's one. So the, here's what you would see in the overall results and we're gonna go over this question what I can do is break it down or overlay multiple questions at a time. So this is how different age groups answered that question. So this is something that's possible with, with me having this, this data um, in detail. And, oh, and I also want to draw your attention to the comments. On every Make Idaho Better survey, there's all these kind of quantitative questions where we're getting numbers and trying to show how the charts play. Um, but we also ask open-ended questions where people can write in their comments. I always ask two things. What gets too much attention about this topic and what doesn't get enough attention? And these questions always blow me away. Like I'm always learning a ton. There's always things I didn't think of that I, that I hear from our respondents. And I would, I almost think this is the best part of Make Idaho Better surveys because there's in people's own language and often in their own experience, they'll tell us about their own experiences. Like some of these are talking about dog ran in the street and got killed. And like, this is, you know, what I saw on that or like dogs get dumped off at this point at this spot in Jerome. Like this is a real stuff um, from people that know about the, these things and how they think and feel about them. This is really good. And I uh, will bold, key phrases um, or words to help you skim. So there's a lot here, you don't need to read it all. If you just look at the bold parts, you can figure out which ones you wanna read in detail. Um, so TJ has, has reviewed all this and read all the comments and, and so that's gonna kinda inform our discussion. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to TJ and let him introduce himself. He, um, here's his webpage that you can come back to on the City of Boise website. You can just Google him, TJ Thompson but I'm gonna, I'm gonna not distract you with looking at his bio while he introduced himself. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, Cameron. And uh, thanks for your hard work on this survey and what you're doing uh, with Make Idaho Better because it's, it's, uh, it's a noble cause and you're doing some good work. I'll, I'll tell you, um, when we met, you know, you'd, you'd asked about some of the issues that were on my mind and uh, let me back up. You know, I've been on the council for uh, since, elected in 2009 so I've been you know almost 10 years uh, and been working on uh, a number of things the entire time uh, whether you know economic issues or healthy initiatives uh, I spearheaded some major changes uh, and improvements for childcare 
But what, you know, uh, some of the things, uh, one thing in particular that has always been on my mind and something I wanted to do more with uh, and, and improve upon is, is our animal code, our animal uh, cruelty laws, um, things around hoarding, around uh, the definitions of uh, treatment of animals. Um, as you know, I'm not a, a big fan of the use of um, animals in, in uh, the circus. Well, you know, animals like uh, elephants and such. And, you know, so th th these have all been uh, bubbling up and I've, I've, I have brought them up. I've had in, in council meetings, I've said, you know, I, this is something I want to work on, animal code uh, cleanup. And uh, much of the time it was, um, you know, well, we've got so much on our plate right now. Uh, not sure this is a, a priority. And this isn't direct quotes, but that's kind of the feeling I got. And so I, I was struggling to uh, figure out if this was something that the public uh, also felt was uh, an important issue and something that a municipality should take on. And uh, and I can speak more to the state versus the the, the city um, and how that relationship um, makes it difficult, but uh, and, and puts uh, side walls around exactly how much we can and cannot do. But um, that's why I, I, I was I was happy to see that you were able to do this survey and it had such uh, an enormous response. Um, yeah, record response. So that's kind of the, the the framework behind why this issue and 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 why now that's uh, really uh, kudos to you. If we hadn't had that meeting, I, I may not be uh, tackling this right this very second. I wanted to. It's just I I didn't know where the public felt on it and this made it possible. Right. And that's what's so exciting to me about about this survey in particular is this is like, to me, the, the, the whole ideal of Make Idaho Better. Leaders that want to kind of um, improve something, um, but they're not exactly sure where people stand on it or they, they have a lot of people that have talked to them about it and that, you know some people are very concerned about it. But you don't know how many people, and you know, don't know if it's very common, and you don't know if you should focus on it or not. And it's hard to like really confidently do something if you're having to base base everything mostly on anecdotes and guesses. So, yeah. So this is a step in the right direction. I don't, I don't think from our this conversation, it's uh, you know, we're ready to draw a conclusion. Every Boisean thinks X or Y, but this is the clearest. Um, the most kind of data that's been collected on this topic. And I think this moves the conversation way, way forward. And I'll, I'll, I will add Cameron, I, you know, I've always thought this was a very important issue. I, I born and raised with dogs and cats. I have three dogs at home, very passionate uh, about dogs. Very cute. Actually, you know, I, I used to be one of the folks that didn't like the zoo. I've turned and come full circle on that. I think zoos are very important. Um, and I love to visit the zoo and see the other animals, but uh, it's it's not that it, I never thought this was very important. I just didn't know if it, in the eyes of the the, the folks that I'm representing um, that it was. And I, I do feel like um, it's certainly. Sorry, I didn't mean to put words in your mouth on that. No, I I, I think it's it, it is important to at least some folks and and quite a few folks. But yeah, I uh, I think whoever's watching this needs to see some pictures of a picture of your dogs. <laughs> oh yeah. There's Those my three pups. So cute. What's the breed? Those are Finnish Lappins. They call them Lappies. And uh, the two in front are, are, are Mel and they are brothers. Uh, and then one year apart and they're, they're older, 14 and 13. And then the, the one in the back uh, is the sleepy the, one. Yeah. She's, she's the little uh, troublemaker. She's a girl. Um, she's four years old in uh, Soma and she's a rescue. There was a animal hoarder in uh, California, oh. hoarding Finnish Lappins. She had uh, 67, 68 of them in, in her residence, and they were rescued. Oh my God. Oh yeah, uh, horrible. And it was um, Sonoma uh, Humane Society down there, Sonoma, that rescued all these, and we put in for one of the puppies, uh, and we got Soma. That's why we named her Soma, Soma from Sonoma. But she was, she's a rescue, she's saved in, uh, that's the story there. So, it, you know, it, it goes back. This is very close to home then, the hoarding thing. Very much so, yeah. Wow. 60-some? Yeah, she, it, yeah, it was around 67, 68. Just stacked on top of each other in crates and, oh, it was 
you know, horrible. And wow. Situation. Okay. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. Um, on that very real note, let's get into some data. Yeah. All right. So I think we, so we asked, depending on who you were, you got, you could have got as few as 10 questions or up to 15 questions. So some people didn't get demographic questions that I asked if I already had that data from them. So I didn't have to, you know, save them a few clicks. Um, so the first thing I asked, and I always like to do this um, sort of a question, kind of to set the stage in a survey is like, what's your personal background? You know, you might have opinions, you might have really strong opinions about all kinds of issues, but it's really good context to know, like, have you personally experienced this or not? Like we just finished up this week, a few leader interviews like this about the homelessness survey we did. And I thought a really important question in that survey, and I used it in my, a lot of my analysis was, do you know, have you or someone you know experienced homelessness? And I think, so I was especially interested to see how those people answered the questions compared to the people that hadn't. So not necessarily that you know, one's wrong and one's right, but like I kind of am a little more interested in people that have experienced something than people that are kind of speculating. Right. So, so on this one, I wanted to know kind of, did you like, you know, those formative years of your life as you're growing up, were pets a part of it um, as context? Um, and yeah, yeah, almost 90%. What is that surprising to you, TJ? It, it wasn't overly surprising because I, you know, I would think that people were drawn to this, uh, to take this perhaps um, if they're passionate about the issue. And it, although almost 90% is, is pretty remarkable, but you know, we, like you've mentioned in the past, uh, Idaho is the highest ownership of, of dogs in the entire country. And I know the Humane Society here um, has to actually ship dogs in to the right. state just to meet the demand. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a pretty remarkable situation. So that 90% thing, that's, that's pretty big. And it matches with what we're seeing in surveys around the country. The sort of one is kind of interesting to me. I, I wonder if that means they had chickens and they sort of consider, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I add that kind of thing because I don't ever want to assume I understand all the possible use cases. Yeah. So sometimes I put things in between to see if that falls into people's, because that could also be like, you know, grandma had a dog. Yeah. But, you know, well, we don't have one, but I was at grandma's all the time. So it was kind of like I grew up with that pet. So yeah. Or Bessie the cow. I considered right. her kind of a pet, but <laughs> you know, could have been a number of things. You're right. Yeah. Cool. So that's good context. And then this one, this one was really interesting to me as a um, other context about our respondents. Yeah. Like, so I asked, and this chart doesn't quite show exactly how I asked it, but I asked basically how many of each type of pet you have, zero, one, two, or three or more. And I asked all the kind, of, I did a little brief amount of research on like, what are the most common pets in the US? Yeah. So I included those and then other. So dogs, cats, birds, horses, fish, and other pets. And then this chart is showing kind of a weighted average, like which ones people had the most of. And we definitely had the biggest average was dogs. Yeah. Um, does anything stand out to you on this chart? You know, I did certainly expect to see dogs and cats leading and dogs as the, as the number one. I, I was surprised. Um, you know, I don't know how many people took this that have fish. I'm sure there's a lot of folks that have uh, fish, but I was surprised that was such a small percentage mm. wise because, you know, when I see one, two, three, four, you have up to 10, do 10 animals, not dogs, 10 animals. And if nine of them are fish, then that would certainly throw things off. But you look at the, the percentage and it's, it's minuscule. Um, Mm -hmm. in terms of how many I mean it, it's very few people in terms of the right population. so I didn't think that that threw off anything uh, right. the reason I'll, I'll tell you the reason I was so interested in, to know the numbers um, well first of all the tying it not necessarily to the hoarding issue but one thing that we have in the city because I don't consider 
these numbers hoarding. I'm just saying in the city of Boise, we have something called a non-commercial kennel license. And it, if you have four or more dogs and cats combined, if you have actually more than four, uh, five plus, you have to obtain one of these. Of course, nobody actually goes and obtains one. It's, it's, I think there's two or three on record right now. I actually no. did when I had three cats and two cats and three dogs, uh, the cats have passed since. So, but it's, it, it's used actually as a tool to uh, show up and if someone um, has massive amounts of cats or dogs, they can say, oh, do you have your non-commercial kennel license and use that to get to the hoarding piece. I don't think it's an effective tool. And I, I wanted, I was, you know, what stands out to me is, look, you have tons of folks, a huge segment of the population that has three or more, four or more. Um, I think it's huge, even though we're, we were talking, you know, 20, 20%, 20 three or more. Um, that's mm -hmm. quite a few. So certainly there's a lot more people out there that obviously would need one of these non-commercial kennel licenses. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's thousands, <laughs> thousands, and thousands. And boys, but, and I'm not, I'm not saying we, we should, everyone should go get those because I want to modify that, that issue so that it's more effective, not as intrusive. I should note that it, to get one of those, you have to go around to all your neighbors and ask for their permission to have more than four dogs and cats combined. Uh, it's it's very intrusive. Um, when I did wow. it, I looked around and said, hey, by the way, I've got two indoor cats is in addition to my three dogs. I need your permission to have these two indoor cats that have never been outside. So that's that's kind of a little context around the numbers and why it's especially interesting. To yeah. Me. Yeah. When you told me about that, I was blown away. That's <laughs> That's got to be one of the most, like, um, you know, unenforced laws or yeah. regulations I've ever heard of. I wasn't um, even... Nobody's got it probably does that. Like you said, there's, like, yeah. I don't know, one or two. Until I posted a picture of my cats one time on Facebook, I wasn't aware of it either. And someone said, hey, TJ, do you know you need one of these non-commercial cats? So, of course, I went and got it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Like, to, yeah, I, I don't know what... You, what do you think, you know, off, like not, no one's going to hold you to this. What do you think is a better number for hoarding? Like, is right. it double digits? You know, I, I don't know. I think it would, if you, you think about what you could handle individually, you know, I have three dogs. I probably couldn't handle four. Um, four would probably be pushing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Four, you know, I've had two cats and I, I, I think cats are a little easier to manage um, if they're indoor, at least maybe I've never had an outdoor cat, so I can't speak to that. But the, so I was playing around with the number um, of four dogs and or four cats. Uh, you know, do we say, Hey, there's a, just a plain limit. There's no requirement to go get a commercial license, non-commercial, but that's where I'll re re, you know, rely on the public. Uh, is that number four? Is it, is it three? Is it not a number? And, you know, there's certainly, there's breeders. I, they should have an exception. Um, right. Something, um, you know, people that are managing animals for uh, site, uh, for folks that need them um, for medical reasons, uh, they may have more than that because they're training them. Uh, so, you mm. know. Service dogs and stuff. Yeah, I think we need to have that discussion, but I think uh, we can get there. I just want to, you know, maybe there's a magic number, maybe there's not, but I'll, I'll rely on the public for that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and this isn't in the overall results, but I was curious to get it, like, relevant to this discussion. I wanted to add up, like, how many pets people have, and that was in the analysis. Yeah. Um, so I was able to add up, you know, if somebody had three dogs and one cat and two birds and one horse, I could add that up, and that would be something like nine, I think, but but this was how it broke down across all the respondents. So we were, to your point, like we're looking at about half are three or more. And you know, yeah. we actually had some as, as high as 15 and I kind of capped it. So, yeah. so I capped it at, you know, for each kind of pet you could have, like the most was three or more. So this numbers could actually be bigger. Um, so I don't know. Is this uh yeah? I, is, I was, is this uh like surprising to you? This view? Yeah, I was counting it up in my head, and you know, 
roughly looking at the four or four through ten, and it looks like it's in that uh, thirty-five percent range at least. That yeah. I mean, if you're talking about a third of the population that has four or more animals, um, then our you know our our citizens have a lot of pets. Is what this is saying. Yeah. A lot more than maybe I would have even expected. I you know you have the the average household you think, and you look at it here, the, the one two the one, two dogs, uh, and two, I'm surprised to beat out one, but um, it's, it surprised me how many people have four or up to 10 plus. And, and that's why I mentioned- It does include fish. So if there's yeah. somebody with three yeah. fish and one dog, that would show up as four. So that's the Yeah, for sure. And that's why I mentioned the fish thing earlier. I, I, don't, I didn't feel like it skewed it too much. No, and fish was- uh, you know, 88% of people said they don't have fish, so. Yeah, so that, you know, that other 12, 11 and a half percent of people, mm -hmm. certainly they could have been some of these folks in the eight, nine, 10 range, but it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's throw it off too much. This is definitely a dog slash keck. Right, yeah, definitely showed in the, uh, you know, this so one. That's really where my focus is going to be, you know, that's, that's the, the bulk of the, the area of concern. Uh, I certainly you hear that's where people. most of the abuse happens. Um, it's you know I've never owned a horse. Uh, my mother did and, and grandparents, but I, I and I'm sure I'm sure that you know lack of attention and things like that or it could be a huge issue when you have an animal of that size um, and the amount of care that it would require. It's hard to throw fish into something like that, you know, yeah. because uh, it, it is hard to manage fish. I've when I had them, it was like a constant effort to keep the right amount of uh, salt and all this different things. Um, it was a full-time job. It's hard to keep them alive. No, they have use. It's just, you know, you, yeah, trying to keep them alive. And so, and birds, I, I know a few people are very passionate have parrots and they're like their kids. Uh, but, I, I, you know, where I hear the most is is on dogs and cats. And yeah, it, it's not, but, you know, I think... Birds and fish probably won't be an area that I do a lot of focus. I haven't even heard a single email or comment uh, specifically. There might have been one in yours I missed, but the horses, that's primarily under the ag, uh, agricultural animals, and we can't manage um, anything in that area except numbers. So it, that's why I'm saying that the bulk of my focus will be dogs and cats. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Let's move on here. Okay, now we're getting into, you know, the abuse part before it was kind of context. So have you witnessed what you consider to be animal abuse before? And I left that a little open-ended because I think it's, it's one of those things where maybe there's not a hard and fast definition that most people adhere to. It's kind of like, you know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of asked it like this. And we ended up with about 65, the biggest one was said of like a few times in my life. Yeah. Um, and that was about 65%, but less than 10% had never seen it before. Yeah. So what stood out to me is, you know, like over 90% had seen it. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, this was almost 10% see it on a weekly basis and some on a daily basis. Yeah. So this actually, to me, this view kind of was like, maybe there's more of it than I real than I expected. Yeah. That's how I took it too. When there's nearly 20% seeing it daily, weekly or monthly, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, backing up someone taking this survey, may have, we saw they have lots of animals, so they may have had an interest because <clears throat> they love animals, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they were gonna take this because they've seen, witnessed animal abuse. So you you have this question in here, and it is it is very telling that so many, 20%, are seeing it so frequently. And uh, I think you mentioned in your your analysis video uh, that you know that it could be um, someone that has a neighbor that they see it on a daily basis, and. It's driving you know driving them crazy and maybe they've reported it and and so that's where they may be seeing it otherwise it's pretty in, incredible if it's not that because you know 
you're just walking down the street and you take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a different person, around. different animal on a weekly basis. That would, that would be crazy. Um, it, but this goes, this to me goes to, you know, also how do people define animal uh, abuse? You know, some want, someone uh, might take pulling on a, a leash really hard, you know, with the spike collar uh, as abuse and maybe it is at a certain point or or is this someone actually beating a dog with a rolled up you know newspaper or book or something you know whatever something, yeah. Yeah. so that's why i want to reassess that definition of animal abuse in our code and say is this is this accurate is it capture what it should um and if we can go above and beyond what the state has i it's their definition i certainly will yeah Cool. To that question, you know, what is it? Like, how do we come up with a definition? Yeah. I wanted to kind of not define it based on this question, but kind of probe people's perceptions, you know, lay out some scenarios and then ask people, you know, how often they think that scenario is abuse, you know, Right. It's, it's always abuse. It's never abuse or it's, you know, something in between. Um, and then I think kind of comparing these different scenarios is pretty interesting to me anyway. Um, and when I included these scenarios, some people in the comments mentioned uh, they, uh, you know, they didn't like some scenarios that I included in this question and one below. They yeah. like didn't think that that was appropriate. But I like to include things that I don't act, some things that I agree with and some things that I actually don't agree with and to just see how people think about them because like I said, I can't think of all the scenarios and I don't wanna put yeah. them in the box. So, um, so I tried here to kind of do one that I thought was almost always abuse or always abuse and one that I thought was probably rarely abuse or only sometimes and then things in between to see if you know, the differences in how people thought about them made sense to based match my assumptions or not. Yes. Um, so the, the one I thought was, I think is always abuse is dog fighting. Absolutely. And then the one that I thought is probably sometimes abuse is phys physicking, physically punishing a pet. Um, yeah. It's worded. I think people could read into that a couple things like, mm -hmm. The reason I would say sometimes, I think it's always if you're kicking kicking a dog, that's always abuse in my mind. But like if like when I went, I got I got my dog um, three years ago, and when we went to you know obedience class, and they teach you you know you should have a prong collar on it, and not you know maybe punishing is not the right word, but you need to correct it when it does something it's not supposed to do. Yeah, you're not trying to hurt it as much as like get its attention. Like that's not what I'm supposed to do. So and that you know so yeah and i use i use the prong on one on my female uh dog just because she's she she runs in different directions and but i don't i don't have to tug on it it's just barely move it and uh she just stays right with me um and that part of that is me having to do some more training but my other two older dogs don't have any desire to sprint off after a squirrel. Yeah. yeah i i i really liked the choices that you had here i think I mean, to me, um, it's hard. Well, organized dog fighting is, I'm surprised it's not 100%. Um, that was pretty close. It was yeah, close. 97, but yeah, who, I don't, somebody <laughs> said, this survey, I don't know, never, yeah. trying to be humorous and it's not, but the, or leaving a, a pet in a hot car, I, I have trouble not seeing that as uh, abuse. And it, it goes, it goes to what you're thinking, you know, I think okay, it's 90 degrees out, the windows are up, uh, and this pet could die just like a child in, in a matter of uh, minutes or have permanent damage. So that one I clearly did. I have three uh, Finnish Lappins that are very hairy and love the winter. So leaving a pet out in the cold, for me, means something different. I, I put um, rarely, or sometimes or rarely, I believe I answered that one mm -hmm. because I'm thinking of my own situation. Uh, if it's if it's above uh, around 20 degrees, um, then I can leave my dogs out, and they prefer it. They mm. 
they will go and just sit in the snow, even though I have a warm spot for them to sit on a cushion uh, under. They're know, like, ah, oh, feels good. Yeah, they just, they love it. And they'll sit in the rain. I'm like, what are you doing? But <laughs> so, you know, they love the cold and uh, not providing food and water. Yes, that's, that's an obvious one. You, you know, if you, if I encourage folks, folks to get that Zamzo's bowl, then you can plug in outside too. If you, mm. if you spend a lot of time outside, because then the water never freezes. Freeze. Overcrowding of home with pets, you know, that has a whole context too. I mean, uh, when I have five, when I had two cats and three dogs, uh, they were having, I think, the time of their life, but maybe someone would have come in my house and been like, whoa, this is kind of an overcrowding. I don't know. I, it, you can have um, one woman with probably five or six cats and they're having a great time. You see a guy with a dog going around a chain and that's that's not good, you know. Uh, that's out there all day. That's so overcrowding. That's something we got to get to and define, like we talked about, uh, and what really is hoarding uh, and what isn't. It, to me, it comes down to how you treat the animals. And and if you are retired and you have five dogs and you're running them and you're loving them and they're having that's that's not overcrowding. That's that's you with five friends that are part right. of your life. Uh, and, and certainly physically punishing touched on that, but it's, it can, it, it is if, if you're beating an animal or you're something along those lines. Um, but there's, there is a line where, uh, discipline, um, which, you know, isn't, isn't through physically hurting an animal, uh, but discipline, um, some may see that as, as going too far as well. I, I, I think there is a time and place for discipline, um, you discipline your kids as well, not through. Well, your, yeah, you, uh, physical, but along those lines. Yeah, it's, I think it's, somebody made a point in some of one of the comments that they think not managing your dog on a leash at the right time is actually animal abuse. One person Ooh. said they, they weren't, didn't have their dog on a leash in downtown Boise and it, you know, didn't, know any better or wasn't thinking and it ran out in the street and got ran over and killed and that's you know maybe that wasn't the dog's fault it's not you know didn't mean to do that it was it, it just you know followed an impulse and the yeah you know that maybe that maybe that should fall into animal abuse or, to some degree or or you know completely yeah it's hard it's hard on that one that's just negligence on the part of the but also accidents happen my you know, I've had my sprinklers blown out and they left the gate open. I come home to, you know, my dog's running uh, and people have got them. They have, you know, the chip and everything, the thing on their collar. But still, uh, that could have resulted in one getting hit by a car. And that's right. not um, uh, animal abuse. That That's just, that was negligence on the individual that left my gate open. Well, you you can't it. probably prevent it in every scenario. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. But okay, let's move on because interesting. I think we've got 15 minutes left. We've got some ground to cover here. Yeah. Um, and this one was though I think these this question the one before it are maybe one two of the most uh, interesting ones to discuss. So we don't I don't want to rush us too much on these. Um, yeah. So this was the other one. This was one where people kind of had an issue with me including hunting in here They're like that should not be in a in a discussion of animal abuse um and and i included it in there not because i think it is you know totally connected or i think it's right. i think of it a little bit but like i know a lot of people do so i wanted it in there um yeah. so yeah the circus animals to me the one that's like <laughs> um you know the clear standout here which is actually not what i what what i expected yeah i thought this would be like factory farmed you know way up there and then maybe circus and zoo would be similar and then wild animals or something right but well, you but you have a stronger view on circus animals so i think yeah i well, do yeah what are, what are you seeing in this so I'll speak to each of these, the, you know, the zoo, I, I, I don't see zoos um, at a, as animal abuse. There's, there's certainly instances where a zookeeper or caretaker 
didn't do their job as, as they're supposed to. Zoos are heavily regulated and they're, hmm. there's actually, um, I'll give you an example, there's, you know, there's fewer tigers in, in the world uh, than there are teams named after them. It's, they're, they're going extinct. There's things that are going extinct and it's horrible. And it, it, I hate to think that zoos are going to be the last place that, you know, we're going to be able to still see some of these animals, but it's going to happen. And it's because of my least favorite uh, person in the world, which is a poacher, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, but I, I'm not, uh, I certainly go to the zoos and see some animals that may look unhappy uh, as well, but it's, it's, it's a situation where I think we need to have them. And I think it's good for maintaining species and the, they're highly regulated. I'm very passionate about this, the circus. I'm, I, I'm, I'd love to go there and just see the, the folks swinging on the bars and trapezing and all the whatever um, miraculous acts they're doing through the air. And, and I have no problem with uh, dogs being part of the circus. I, it's when I see uh, a non-domesticated animal like a, a lion, a bear, a tiger, certainly an elephant. That's, that's what raises uh, my, my, blood temperature and see them carting around in, in uh, iron boxes. So I, you know, I've, I'm one that has shown up at uh, a protest for a circus, just, just to try to educate uh, folks that are going in. I don't know if there's much we'll be able to do to around this, but I will certainly make my opinion known um, that we only have one circus that comes here, uh, usually each year at the Shriners. And I, most of these are phasing out those non, non-domesticated animals. So I think it's going to happen on its own. Mm. But, yeah, I, but I'll note that I was surprised and pleasantly surprised to see that as the highest one, just because it matches my own uh, opinion about it. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and it's good to see that I'm not, I'm not crazy pants thinking that elephants in the circus is, is a, not a good idea. I really yeah, wanted- I didn't even- you know, yeah. specify elephants or like non-domesticated animals. So like, it's, you know, even more kind of eye-opening or. Yeah, it, it really is based on that. The wild animals, I, I definitely support hunting. Um, people going through the appropriate process of getting the permit and going hunting. Absolutely. Uh, it's, so I don't group that in there. Um, I, I'm not, I'll admit, I'm not a big fan of, of trapping. I think we've, we've gotten past the, the, age of um, having to provide for your family with trapping uh, but that's that's neither here nor there and I'm, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole because it's it's not even a city issue just mm-hmm. a personal opinion and factory farm animals that's why my family is so focused on trying to spend it's cost a little more but we try to spend uh, I am a meat eater but I you know try to buy the ones that put the animals in the best position, but uh, yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Grass fed. For those results though, it is, it, it's telling to see it's so high, but it's second place to circus. And that like you, I thought that was eye opening because you see yeah. it every day in the stores, you know, by the, by this one, because of this, by this, because of that, and then the information out there, but yet it's still scored under the circus. Yeah, totally. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. The next few, I think, are really kind of um, really good for, if I put myself in your shoes and I'm like, am I going to do something about this? Yeah. I want to know, like, how freaked out are people or how much does this bother them? And, like, should, do they want me to do something about it? And for context, how does this compare to other, you know, yeah. society, how, uh, other issues I would be working on in the city? So we've got this one. How concerned are you about animal abuse? This one should more be done yeah. to prevent animal abuse. And then this one kind of, how would you rank issues with animal abuse yeah. uh, compared to these other ones? So how, you know, of these three, well, I'll just, I'll, we can kind of go in between them. Cause I think that's a, maybe the most interesting way to discuss it, but we got definitely a strong majority Yes. Over 80% are very concerned or extremely concerned with only yeah. like, I don't know, three and a half percent are not concerned. The so somewhat is around 15. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, yeah. Hey, and then the uh, same, even more ex- 
even more support for should more be done, I thought. Mm -hmm. like, you know, if you compare these two charts, the somewhat concerned is 15%, and then, you know, we've got less than five for not. Yeah. If you could, like, if you think of these together, and, like, the maybe is, like, the somewhat concerned, that's smaller, and the no's are smaller, too. So, like, there's a bunch of people that aren't that concerned that you think we should do more. Yeah. Yeah. This, this tells me very clearly that there is a uh, large, there's a portion of the population that feels very passionate that more needs to be done and um, that we're not doing enough and that it is a, it is a problem. And while we know this, you know, it's not a scientific poll per se, but it, you have over 800 people and all, you know, the vast majority, 84% or 3% are saying that it is, it is a problem. Uh, right. Yes, absolutely. They're concerned and, and uh, something has to be done. I, just as you noted in your video or in your write-up, I, I took this as a green light that there is, and I'm seeing the same thing in my posts on, on Facebook, again, not scientific, um, and getting hundreds uh, of likes and, and, and share, not hundreds of share, you know, but lots of people mm -hmm. sharing and, and commenting. I've probably had three or four negative comments and they're not negative. They're more like, uh, really, is this your top priority? And back with I can multitask so mm -hmm. don't worry I can I can still focus on transportation and, and the environment and the economy but it's 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 a vast majority just like you saw in this poll um, so and I have put issues out there before uh, that didn't get the love like that mm -hmm. at all and or or people were resistant or uh, some of my areas of healthy initiatives and things that some were very popular and some were like, no, don't touch that. And they'll tell you. So it's not, it's, it's, I think this is very accurate to what I'm also seeing. And it tells me that we need to do more. And that's what I'm going to try. Right. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned this isn't a scientific poll. Um, you're right. It's not a random, random sampling that we can um, say is, is uh, representative of, of Boise as a whole. So, you know, there's everybody that took this is pretty much, I would say, an engaged, what I would call an engaged Boise and somebody that's like trying to be in the know, trying to co contribute. Yeah. I think that's a, probably a minority out of the general population. And then we have kind of another level of, you know, of all the engaged people, these are probably the ones that are even more interested and maybe have stronger opinions about this issue that are answering it. So that's to say, you know, we're seeing here 85% about are very concerned about animal abuse. Yeah. It probably wouldn't be 85%. I would be shocked if it stayed exactly the same if we had like, for instance, everybody in Boise had answered this. Right. Um, sure. But with these kinds of numbers, I would be really shocked if, um, it wasn't the majority that still felt very concerned or, or, you know, well, and I maybe won't even say that. I would just say, I would be shocked if, if it was directionally wrong, if it was the other way around and every, you know, most people are not concerned. That would be really, 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 really surprising to me. Yes. I, I, I couldn't see it just flipping. Uh, this to me is, is a green light to do more um, in this area. And I, I, the, if you go down to those issues comparison, yeah, well, that. Um, that, that, that really, this one blew me away the most. I know people are taking this and they may have an interest in animals specifically, so they take it, but still to put it um, higher than some of these others, like zoning and permitting, I think of as growth, traffic and parking is what it is. It's also transportation though in that bucket. Uh, land conservation. I had to share that specifically with our uh, council president, Lauren, because, you know, she's super pro and we all are on, on the council, super, but she's kind of takes the lead on land conservation issues. And I was like, Hey, guess what? Animal abuse beat out land conservation. <laughs> Just yeah. wanted to let you know, but it, um, yeah, and drug enforcement, actually, I found that kind of funny that it's third. I couldn't believe it was considered so high, but I, you know, I might attribute that to the opioid crisis. Yeah. Yeah. And until I thought of that, I, I was like, well, we're not, no, 
are we talking about mar marijuana legalization? Because this is Idaho. But I, I think it really is whatever's in that person's mind when they took it. But the opioid crisis is very severe. So after I yeah. thought it, I was like, okay, that makes a little more sense. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting one. And, and something that I want to look into more, um, I think the marijuana legalization discussion is fascinating. And I yeah. Yeah, kind of, that would be a really fun topic to yeah. kind of parse those out. Hands, the, the state has full control on that one in Idaho, but yeah. people approach me about that all the time. I say, sorry, I got to talk to your legislator. I, something I can do. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, cool. And then again, the comments are in here. Yeah. So I highlighted, excuse me, in the analysis, what I consider the most um, interesting ones or the most representative. Um, but you can see every single one, all 833 for both questions, either, you know, anybody that's watching this, which I think is really cool. If you want to, you know, go way, 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 way deep down in this stuff, you can. Um, but I wanted to simplify what I thought were the, you know, top ones. So, yeah, so these are here. Um, and with that, I think we have two minutes left. I'm, I'm curious to know TJ from this conversation and this yeah. whole research project and, and you know, the, what people are telling you, like what, what's sticking out in your mind? Is anything like top of mind on this subject to kind of leave us with? Well, I see this, uh, this survey and the comments I'm also receiving on top of that as, as a green light to go forward and yeah. work to improve our animal abuse laws, or uh, whether it be hoarding the definition, uh, the penalty, the fine, um, and, and I am doing that now. I'm actually working with our legal team to see what the parameters are around it because the state of Idaho has a lot of say over these. I can't make it a felony on the first offense. Felonies are not in the hands of, of the city, but can I increase the penalty? Can I say that maybe someone needs to receive mental health um, counseling after being uh, found guilty of it? Right. And, you know, is there uh, something, uh, class, things that they'll have to take? I, I just want to improve the lives of these animals and um, make it better for all of us in that regard. We can take steps, and I, I think we'll get there. there I'll leave it with, uh, you know, if, if there's folks that are interested and want to help me with this effort to, you know, email me at TJ Thompson and there's no P in Thompson, T-H-O-M-S-O-N, T-J Thompson at cityofboise.org. I have I have a really growing list that, you know, 30, 40 people, I think it's to now. Of, that's extraordinary for any issue. I'll, I'll get three or four people. This one, already 30, 40 people have said, put me on your list. We'll be at City Hall when, you know, you're ready to do something or meet with us and we'll give you ideas. So that's extraordinary. If there's others oh, out there. Cool. Awesome. Well, TJ, thanks, uh, thanks so much for, um, you know, looking into this, working with Make Idaho Better, chatting with me about the results. Um, you know, I'm rooting for you, and I hope we can do something like this again in the future. Thank you, Cameron. I appreciate your hard work. Thanks. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.